came to San Francisco, 1951. I was about seven or eight years old. I had asthma and the doctor thought the weather would be better if I came to San Francisco. And uh, my mother had a sister here who lived in Double Rock, which is a, a public housing. And uh, that's where I used to hang out quite a bit. They had a boathouse there. The folks in the neighborhood and who lived in the project, that's where they parted at, you know, at that boathouse. It used to be right on the water down there. Yeah. First house we had was down by Laguna and Octavia uh, in that area. And it was the Alley Street. Then a lot of blacks who couldn't afford lived in the narrow streets. The alley, now they gentrified and the whole type of reverse situation. Well, you, as, like most kids, you, 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 you know, you draw and you play around with it. You sketch, you do kinds of things. You know, people encourage you by saying how great it is, how you're doing, you're nice as a kid. Whether it is or not, they, 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 they encourage you in that sense. About 64, 65, around the same time, I went to City College for commercial art. Because being in and out of the youth detention center, they seen I had a uh, desire to be an artist. When I went and talked to the counselor, the counselor said you should take up commercial art. Well, commercial art deals with pre-press production aspect of putting publications together and all those things. So that's how I got my only basic training uh, that I had was at City College. All that played into when I came into the Black Panther Party and I was asked to work on the newspaper. I can't think certain death got a ring to it. I can't dream and wake up in Halloween. And this is the black conscious era. When the, you know, we're beginning to find our name, just sign ourselves as African, African-American, black, as opposed to Negro. The colonial name given to define us. You had a lot of rebellions, a lot of stuff that was going on, riots, just like now, young blacks being murdered, always being justified. So a lot of young folks like myself were trying to figure out what we could do and how we could get involved. So one day, a brother named Hank Jones, who was one of the Panthers, he mentioned to me that there was a meeting going on and they wanted to know if I would do the artwork. So that was my first introduction into the Black Panther Party. There was a place called the Black House in San Francisco. And El just lived upstairs, and they used to do a lot of the cultural events downstairs. While uh, Sonia Sanchez, Ed Bullins, different playwrights, Stokely, all those folks would come through there. And it just so happens one night, our uh, day I went over there on a Saturday, and Huey and Bobby was working on the first legal size sheet of paper. I observed him and I said, well, I can get some materials and help you. I still got materials from City College and stuff. I said, I can run home and get them and come back. When I came back, he said, well, we finished, but you seem to be committed and you be hanging around. And uh, we're, gonna start, we want, we're gonna have the paper. It said, because the black community wasn't a reading community, but they learned through observation and participation, we want to have a lot of images so that those who weren't going to read along our articles would get the gist of what was going on by looking at the photographs and the captions under the photographs. So they had this whole vision. And they say, you will be the revolutionary artist and eventually you become the minister of culture. Do you believe everything that's in that pamphlet? You know, we had to make up our own production sheets to put a cut and paste with a lot of, in the beginning was done with headlines, was done off with the rub off type you can buy on sheets. Uh, we had typewriter with the ball, which a lot of the articles maybe were typed on for the first several papers. It was like a portable operation. We could pick it up and take it anyway. Sometimes we have apartments that we rented, look so we could spread stuff out, lay it out, and cut and paste on those kinds of things using regular signals and regular glue, all that kind of stuff, you know, makeshift. It's a visual language. And it's just a way to communicate the art itself. It's, it's for whom it serves. It's just a reflection of the politics. We 
want to tell our story from our perspective. So the art was a reflection of that in the context of service and service of the community. You know, and hearing those issues and concerns and the pain, the suffering, and all that, and you interpret that in your artwork. You got to put it in practice. Like Huey Newton had a vision and they put it into practice. That's courage, so they could have been wiped off the map before they got off the ground. You can have a vision, and, and hypothetically and theoretically, until you put it into practice, then you might have to make adjustments and changes. So that's the foundation, and to be inspired by it, to be inspired with it going forward, to make it happen. So, so you got to do it. If you don't, you got to do it. You got to implement it, you got to practice it, you got to do it. Let's talk about all power to the people. Let me say that.